Okay, I decided to make some changes here. I'm going to drive this with a pulley because I can double the RPMs more readily with a pulley by changing the ratio of the pulley than actually mounting the wheel on the shaft. The other issue is that this doesn't have a precision bearing. It has a uh, oil filled slip bearing. It's not really as durable as like a a motor that would have a precision bearing that could handle the weight of the wheel on it. This could possibly work but I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to mount it on a rig like this right here and then use a pulley on the back with a belt to drive this motor. But if you guys are going to do that I want to go ahead and square the motor up. If you're going to use a motor as your drive shaft uh, you want to make sure you get it square by using a, uh, a T-square to square the motor level with the front edge of the de of the, the cart. So I'm going to go ahead and mount it, go through it with you, uh, but I will be changing it to this in, in the later videos. And basically this is going to get mounted on the cart motor. So we're pulling that motor, pulling that wheel, we're mounting this wheel, the new wheel, and this rig on the existing cart motor. But I will be releasing schematics and everything you need to build your cart similar to this. So I just want to go over some of the changes here because you know this is a process and I'm trying to develop that cart motor into a usable system so I want to use all my resources to do that but I also want to do videos so you guys can get caught up on how this works and what it's supposed to do basically you want to level and then screw it down with nice heavy bolts I wouldn't use a lag bolt because it could pull out from vibration you want to use a bolt with a nut and a washer to bolt this down to your table um, and we'll we'll go ahead and mount the wheel which is now coated with plastic on both sides to add rigidity to the design now what you see I've done I've laid the motor in there and I've marked it exactly where I'm going to mount it and now I can with the motor out of the way I can drill these holes for the mounting bolts now obviously if you have a drill index and you know the size of your bolts no problem if not use a pair of calipers uh, determine the size of your bolt and then use that to determine your drill size well, you don't want any play in this rig so it's important that you use the right size bolts and the right size drill bits Okay, now I got the bolts in, but I haven't tightened them up because I want to ensure that the motor is still square with the front of this table. So I'm going to put the T square up against it, check it on both sides, ensure that it's properly squared up, and then I'll check it again once I've tightened it down. In this case, I'm going to put three screws evenly spaced, and that'll allow me to uh, tighten. The tension up on the wheel so if if it's slightly off running true I can adjust it and what I'll do is I'll add this plate uh, which you would probably have to make or it came off of an exercise wheel so you, you could basically use one off of an exercise wheel but that's going to add a little rigidity to both sides of the wheel and allow me to keep it square and true to the shaft so if you guys have a motor make sure the shaft is long enough to extend beyond the outside edge of the wheel um, but the way we're going to mount it it doesn't really matter so um, it'll be mounted on a, a shaft with with precision bearings so but I wanted to put it up here just to give you guys a look 
at the wheel and how true the wheel is. You can see it's just pushed on there. So obviously if I was tightening tightening up the bolts I could true that up. It's not that far off. And some of the wobble is even being generated by the covers not being on the outside edge. So basically that's the way you would mount it if you were mounting it directly on the motor. I suggest you get precision bearings and you come up with a rig like this. This is the way we're going to do it um, because of the the ease of changing out the different types of generators. We have at least four different generators planned that will be belt driven. So by using this smaller uh, pulley here I can get a two to one ratio. The wheel only needs to run 900 RPM to give me 1800 RPM on the generator. Just makes more sense to do it that way.